Then declare it one more time with a sense of finality. And my life, and my life will, never, will never, ever, ever be, the be the same again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap offering. Make a shout to the Lord, all ye people. Look for two, three people. Give them a high five. Tell them, you are my witness. Let us be seated in the presence of God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I am transforming my generation. One more time, say, I am, I am transforming my generation. my generation. And I say to transform the world, we must transform the mountains of influence. I'll be working on those in the, this new year. When somebody say amen. amen. Therefore, my assignment here and the pastors is that we must prepare. But they are in my, I'm in my notes already. We must prepare the next generation to be involved in fake, effectively these mountains of influence. That means we must raise men and women who possess four things. Number one, they possess cognitive intelligence. People who are book smart. That is measured by your IQ. Somebody say amen. It's there on the bulletin. So let's read together. What does it mean? Cognitive, soma na mimi, cognitive intelligence. That means you are what? Book smart. That is measured by your what? You are intelligence quotient. That's what IQ means. You must be people who are read. You must be men and women who love books. You must be men and women who are experts and an authority in your area of expertise. Somebody say amen. So when you are talking about the next 10 years, you need to start thinking, what can sharpen my skills in my area of expertise? What can make me sharper? What can give me the cutting edge above other people in my profession? Somebody say amen. Number two, for you to do that, you need emotional intelligence. Say it to me, emotional. I didn't say you whisper. Say emotional. emotional. Intelligence. That means you are what? People... It is there, read. This is not an exam. How to go, maybe I'm Tian. It is up there on the bulletin. That means you are what? People smart. What does that mean? You know how to handle people and build teams to achieve your goals. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. John Maxwell says, one is too small a number to bring transformation. If you are going to bring transformation, one is too small a number. You alone cannot bring transformation. You need to know to marshal a team around you. Somebody say amen. And for you to marshal a team around you, Jesus needed a team. Paul needed a team. David needed a team to be a transformer. That means you must be emotionally intelligent. So that you can achieve your goal for the next 10 years, you'll need men and women who are your destiny helpers and destiny carriers to come and connect with you so they can help you achieve your goals. Somebody say amen. And they, I, somebody say amen. amen. And therefore, in the anointing tonight, we, are, shall, we shall be anointing you for restoration and demonstration. Some of you for people and men and women who are destiny carriers, who are destiny helpers to come and join you and locate you so they are not on this side. Who shall come and join you, who shall, they are not on this side either. Uh, where are they? Where, where are people are they who came for service this morning? I say we are praying that your destiny carriers shall locate you and come and help you so that you can achieve your goal in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you understanding me, church? Amen. Number three, you must be financially intelligent. Say financial intelligence. Financial. If you are sitting next to someone who's not reading, I allow you to move. Because <coughs> you, you may be sitting among a bunch of Philistines that are not Hebrew children. Say again, financial intelligence. financial intelligence. What does that mean? You are money smart. That means you, you do what? You know how to handle money and add financial value to everything that you have. Listen to me, friends. 
your life has financial value. Are you ready for church? Yes. Then why are you keeping quiet? I said your life has got financial value. Yes. Your time has got financial value. Yes. Don't allow people to waste your time. They say time is money. Yes. Have you heard of that saying? Yes. What are they trying to tell you? They are telling you your time has got financial what? Value. Your life has got financial what? Value. Even the clothes you are wearing has got financial value. Say money. I didn't say you whisper, say money. money. Say money, 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 money. money. Me, I said seven times. Some of you said only three times. That's why you don't have a lot of money. <laughs> when a prophet says something, he's not saying it because he's bored. He's saying it for a reason. This is the year 2020. And Second Chronicles 2020 says, believe in God, you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Some of you struggle in believing God's prophets and you will struggle. But the year 2020, yes. you shall believe the prophets of God also. Yes. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Am I helping somebody here? Yes. Okay, say money, 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 money. Money! Yes. Money answers all things. I said money answers what? Yes. You need money to live. You need money to eat. You need money to dress. You need money for education. You need money for medicine. Look at your neighbor for me and preach. Tell them, neighbor, even if you don't believe in money, when you die, it will cost someone money to bury you. Kufa sahi. Kufa sahi. Mimi siyemi ni mambo ya pesa. Kufa sahi. Kukutua hapa tutalipa mtu wa bagari pesa kupeleke mochwari. Na kutua ya mwili mochwari tutafta pesa tena tutoe. So you need to look for money to bury yourself. Jizike yes. ukiwa bado uko hai, pana kuachia watu shida. So you need financial intelligence. So you need to have to leverage your time, your resources, your life for what? Financially. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, the fourth one is what? It is there for you. It is what? Now I can see you are ready for service. Spiritual that means you are what? What does that mean? You know how to interpret the divine blueprint for the season you are in. Because to everything there is a time. This they say. I'm you know, I get frustrated when I'm so prepared and I find people just look like I say to everything there is a time and there is a season for every purpose. You must understand the season you are in. And you must understand God's blueprint for the season you are in. So that you don't start doing stuff that were meant to be done by your grandfather. You are doing it in a wrong season. Are you understanding me, friends? If you don't understand the season you are in, you'll start living 2020 like your father lived in 1960. In Kenya now, we need men and women who have got spiritual intelligence, who can understand what Kenyans ought to do because the politicians don't know. And unless someone rises as a prophet to tell the nation, thus says, I knew there are some believers here, thus says, that is what we need. Otherwise, we keep on listening to them, friends. Even after BBI, they'll come up with another report. I can tell you, this BBI shall not be the end. We shall write another one. But I am praying. In this season, they shall rise a bunch of men and women. And I'm seeing them in this house. Who are spiritually intelligent. Who shall understand the times. Who shall understand the seasons. Like the sons of Issachar. Who understood the times and the seasons. And they knew what Israel ought to do in that time. May you be the person I'm talking about. I said may you be the person I'm talking about. Are you understanding me church? You see the other three. 
It's there in my notes. If you own them, you can find them. The other three items. You can be taught. All the other levels can be, read for me, all the other levels can be achieved by training and human mentoring. Spiritual intelligence comes from your relationship with the living God through his Holy Spirit. Are you understanding, friends? All the other three, people can teach you. You can go to school. You can be trained. You can be mentored to get them. But I'm talking about now you come to a place where you're not operating just from a cognitive intelligence and financial intelligence and emotional intelligence. You are operating at another level of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 where the Bible says it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit. Is it up there? What does it say? This is the word of the Lord. To Zerubbabel. What does it say? Not by. Not by. But by what? Look at it in the message Bible. What does it say in the message Bible? Read for me what does it say? This is God's message to Zerubbabel. Look at your tell him, neighbor, you look like Zerubbabel to me. So, mpatia ujumbe ya Zerubbabel. Nese maje? Mubiri ocha kumbebeleza. What does the Lord say? You can't force these things. They only come through my word. They only come through what? I pray today. May the spirit of the living God start hovering over your life. Start moving over the chaos of your life. Start moving over the darkness of your life. To start giving you ideas and dreams and visions that shall be able to make you spiritually intelligent so that as you go forward in 2020 up to 2030, you shall let go of past failures and traditions of men that have caused you to fail up to now. You shall embrace God's principles, new ideas, new revelation from the living God. Somebody say amen. amen. You must be different from your neighbors. This side now, turn how many, how many let down. I said you must be different from your neighbors. You must be different from your cousins. You must be different from people in your generation. I have nothing against them, but they are not here. But because you are here, I shall teach you. Get this word. Let this word transform you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. The men and women we say they are transformers. Esther was not the only wife in the harem of the king where she was. In fact, the first wife, the one that we know was Vashti. Am I correct? Yes. I say, am I correct? Yes. What made Esther different from Vashti? These kings, I told you in the first service, did not just have one wife. They used to have what they call a harem. A harem is like a lodging house where these wives are kept. And let me ask you a question. The Bible says Solomon had how many wives? How many? And how many concubines? Eh? A total of how many women? You tell me then if you are going to sleep with one every day. When will you get to number one? After how many years? Talk to me. I've asked you a question. Instead of answering me, you are laughing. Simfanya calculation. Muna simuna simu. Simfanya calculation. You have a thousand women available to you. Even if you are going to spend a night with each one of them every night, how many years will it take for you to go back to Uli Alikwa number one? Miakangapi? That is why Esther, when she was told by Mordecai, you know, go and talk to the king on our behalf. She told Mordecai, by the way, for three months, the king has not even called me. He's using the other women. And I cannot just appear there unless I'm summoned. Am I talking to somebody here? But when she appeared, now you are getting it. Can I preach in this area? When she appeared, the king did not throw her out. You know why? Because of spiritual Ah, now you are getting it here. Can you pray for the other direction also? Mungo wa patia ufunua. Are you getting the revelation here? That Joseph was not the only prisoner. There are many other 
prisoners. But the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 41, verse 14, and the Pharaoh sent for Joseph. Why didn't he send for all the prisoners? It is there. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. What made Joseph a different prisoner? It's because Joseph had what we call spiritual intelligence. He was a prisoner like any other. But he was a prisoner above the other prisoners. When he went to Potiphar's house, he worked above other slaves. When he went to the prison, he operated above the other prisoners. Now when he goes to the house of Pharaoh, he's above the magicians and astrologers in the court of Pharaoh. I am talking about your promotion. I said I'm talking about your promotion. It shall not just come because of cognitive intelligence. It shall not come because of financial intelligence. It shall not just come because of emotional intelligence. It shall come also because of spiritual I refuse for you. Where are you? I refuse for you to remain at the bottom of the food chain in your generation. You must arise above the, the food chain in your generation. Somebody say amen. Gonga jirani yako mambie neighbor. See you at the top. Na kama unabakia bakia hapo mimi sibaki na wewe. I am becoming a transformer and I'm going above. I'm rising above. Tell them I'm rising above the food chain. Somebody say amen. amen. Moses was learned. He was what? With all the learning of the Egyptians. He's not the only one who was learned. No, others were learned with him. But when he came to the court of Pharaoh, together with his brother Aaron, suddenly Pharaoh saw a different person. Am I talking to somebody here? Because he was operating with spiritual what? Intelligence. And I'm talking about... An, where can I put it? I'm talking about something that shall rise you and raise you above everybody else in your situation. Somebody say amen. I'm talking about your promotion as a businessman, as a teacher, as a lawyer, as an engineer, as a saloonist. Whatever it is you are doing, you can rise above the others in your generation because of spiritual Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, I refuse, I refuse to live and operate at the bottom of my food chain. I am rising above in Jesus' name. That is what spiritual intelligence does. We are talking about your what? Your promotion. Are we together, church? Daniel, tell them about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were regular young men until they discovered social intelligence. Sorry, spiritual intelligence. And when they operated with spiritual intelligence, they started rising above everybody else. <laughs> we'll stay there. Just work a bit. Let's look at the story of Daniel. Come, come. Are you ready? What does it say? Come up here. Now, you are whispering or you are looking at him. I know he's taller than me. Read for me in a loud voice. I saw me, you man. Then the king instructed Ashpenaz the master of his eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles. That's, that's, that's okay. Thank you. God bless you. I appreciate uh, Ken. <clears throat> These were young men among many young men. Am I correct? And the king said, hey, bring me a bunch of young men here. Collect them. He's telling Ashpenaz, his chief of 
because I told you there are things you can get out of education. You can get out of what? Education. So look at what he's doing for them. I'm in the next verse. What does it say? Young men, you are reading with me? What does it say? Young men in whom there was no blemish but good looking. Tell your neighbor like you. Are you seeing those are features you can, you can get? You can be young, you can be handsome, you can be beautiful. That one you can get. Talk to me. But I'm trying to teach you something that will make you, make you be above other beautiful women. Because you're not the only beautiful woman. You're not the only handsome man. You're not the only handsome young man. But I want to rise you above. The other handsome young men. Come on, look someone that I've talked to us channel Rembo. Sini wengi. Una tafuta vijana walio na sura nzuri. Sini wengi. Lakini nataka ni kuinue juu ya wao. Kwa maana ni wengi. Somebody say amen. Weka hiyo maandiko tena tuangalie. Eh? But good looking, what else? Gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to who have the ability to do what? And who might who, to serve in the kings? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, this is what we are talking about here. Hey, tell your neighbor, this is what we are talking about here. Are you able to serve in the king's palace? See, if you don't understand this, eh? if you don't understand this, there are some things we'll have, they'll keep in the wilderness with the sheep. Like David. But there's some place you can come, the king shall tell you, come to my palace. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. You can be a good shepherd, but you're not fit for the palace. To go to the palace, you must change your garments. You must change the way you talk. You must change the way you behave. Am I talking to somebody here? What is he saying? I want them to serve in my... That's what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about stuff that shall bring you before kings. Shall bring you before rulers. That is where you are going. Amen. I'm prophesying to somebody. Amen. I say that is where you are going. I'm be a jira neko neighbor. Uta nisoma kwa gazeti. Mungu aneza tu amutu kwa newsroom kusoma hataifa tarifa ya bari. Unamkuta ni spokesman wa, 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 wa rais mzima. Si, kanze dena. Si eleacha wenzake wa mado nafanya vipindi. Akatolewa kusoma ya tarifa ya. Na hii ndio tarifa. Akatolewa. Leo ni spokesman wa rais. If it can happen to kanze dena. God can pick you. In your profession. You are a tailor. Uneza kuambi. Eh, uneza kuambi. Wee ndo toko na shonea president suti. Ukashona tu suti tano. Unapiga, una, unaacha umaskini na kwa nasaba. Na ya isi? Niendelema na wachia po Oscar. I am out of with somebody here. You, there is a man who died a millionaire. All he used to do, the first business he had, was to supply eggs to the governor of Kenya. That's all. He started supplying what? So even when the governor left, he continued supplying eggs to state house. By the time that man died, he was a multi, multi, because of, listen, you can be an egg seller, but if you sell eggs in state house, ah, you are a different egg seller. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I teaching you something here? So if the king can send for you to work in his office, you can work there as a secretary. Are you aware your future is changed? But I'm just a driver. So imagine you are driving the president of Kenya. Are you another driver? Utakuwa na salibi ole makanga mlikuwa nao. Neatea. Na wana kuondokea nji? You are still a driver. You are still a what? But another class, so I'm talking about you. Yeah. I say, may God promote you yeah. to another kind of a tailor. Yeah. 
another kind of a lawyer, another kind of a doctor, another, am I talking to somebody here, because of spiritual what? Intelligence. That is what shall set you apart. Put it up, put it up. Can you look at that? That who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom I might do what? Teach. I might do what? Teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans. So that he's being told, bring them so I can teach them. What is he teaching them? He's teaching them cognitive intelligence. He's teaching them financial intelligence. He's teaching them emotional intelligence. That one you can be taught. There are schools you can go today. And even as you go to university, they'll teach you how to dress. They'll teach you how to eat. They'll teach you how to hold a, a fork and a knife. How to behave before rulers. How, when to chew. How to chew. How to swallow. Eh, the food. Don't just want me. <laughs> And then you belt. And then you, no, no, they'll teach <laughs> It's called etiquette. You can learn that. Are you understanding me now? All these guys who are being taught that. But look at verse 17. What does it say? As for these four, God gave them what? I am praying for you. You can be in school. But God can give you knowledge. And understanding. Beyond what your teachers are teaching you. I say may you receive it. You can attend a seminar. But God can give you understanding. Beyond what the seminar is teaching you. You can go for what they call capacity building workshop. I am praying what the facilitators are teaching you. May God give you. I say may God give you what? Beyond what the facilitators are giving. I say receive that. I say you receive that. Somebody say Amen. Because I'm talking about you, you're my friend. You can be an engineer above other engineers. You sit in the same class with others. Same class with? But God is giving you knowledge. God is giving what? May God do that for you. I say may God do that for you. I say may God do that for you. God gave them what? And what else? And skill in all literature and wisdom. What else? I am praying for somebody here. I say I'm praying for somebody here. May God give you wisdom. Are, there, are you aware wisdom does not come with age? We have got some very foolish old men. If you are 70 years old and you are marrying a girl of 25, you are not wise. You may look clever, but you're not wise. You are 70. What are you doing with a girl of 25? What will you do? It's lack of wisdom. You may look clever, but it's lack of what? May God give you wisdom to know that what you ought to do. Somebody say amen. What else were they given? Understanding. They were given what? I am praying for you right now. May God give you understanding. The writer of the book of Proverbs says, in all you are getting, get what? Get wisdom and what? I pray may God open your eyes. May God open your intelligence. May God, am I in the right church here? May God give you wisdom. May God give you knowledge. May God give you understanding. In whatever it is you are learning, may you become the best tailor. Go to the next verse. I'll go to that verse. Let's finish it. Same verse. Quickly. Let's finish it. And Daniel had what? Daniel had what? In what else? That's another thing that comes out of spiritual intelligence. Understanding of visions and dreams. And this year of restoration. And this year of demonstration. One of the things that I want to be restored I want God to restore visions. I want God to restore dreams on your life in the name of Jesus Christ. May you, may you be a visionary in your generation. May you be a dreamer in your generation. 
May your generation live and depend on your dreams. Can somebody say amen? amen. Go and get children of your neighbor. You are sitting next to a dreamer here. You are sitting next to a visionary here. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why in the book of Acts, chapter, chapter 2, verse 17, the Bible, Acts 2, 17, what does it say? He's quoting prophet Joel. Read for me what does it say? And it shall come to pass. In what? What, what days are these? Last days are which days? Tell them we are in those days. We, we are. We are in the last days. So what is God doing in the last days? That I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. Your old men I pray for those in this house. I release the spirit of God that gives dreams and visions to rest upon you. May the solution of the problem, problems facing Kenya, may you get it in a vision. May you get it in a dream. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell a neighbor for me, neighbor, amen. one vision from God amen. will solve the problems out in your life. Tell another one, a dream from God can change the destiny of your family. May the God of heaven, who is a dream giver, who is a vision giver, may he give you dreams, may he give you visions, may he visit you, even when you sleep at night. May God talk to you, I pray, and give you dreams and visions. Somebody say amen. amen. Transformers are men and women who see what others are not seeing who hear what others are not hearing, who attempt what others fear to attempt because they have seen a vision. May you be that kind of a person. Yeah. I say, may you be that kind of a person. Yeah. Are we together, friends? Go to that verse 18. Daniel 1, 18. Now, let's read this verse together. What does it say? When the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of Eunuch brought them in before. Continue. Then the king did what? And a man. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Therefore, I am praying for somebody in this house. Where are you? The next interview. In the year 2020, someone is going for an interview for a job. Someone is going for an interview for promotion. And I've come to profess over your life. The next interview you are going to right now, they, as they interview you, they shall find you are not ordinary. You are above other accountants, above other engineers, above other lawyers, above other nurses, Above other doctors, above other, tell them, neighbor, I shall be above. Because of what? Spiritual? Spiritual? It shall make you above. How much above? Look at the following verse. How much above? Read for me. And in how many matters? I am praying for somebody here. That in all matters. How many matters? How many matters? How many matters? God is an expert in every matter. That concerns your life. And I am praying for you right now. That in all matters of wisdom and understanding. About which the king did what? Examine them. He found them to be what? Ten times better than what? Than all the magicians and astrologers. I am about to prophesy to somebody here. I am about to prophesy to somebody here. No witch. They are not on this side. I said no witch. I said no wizard. Shall be more intelligent than you. I say no witch. I say no wizard shall be more intelligent than you in the name of Jesus Christ no wizard shall be wiser than you 
No wish shall be wiser than you. And I prophesy as they examine you in this year of restoration of your dreams and your visions, as they examine you, it shall be demonstrated that you are ten. What did I say? Ten. Prophesy again, you shall be again. Again. Mulakayanda la kazata la kabukazita. I am prophesying here. You shall be ten times better than other accountants. Ten times better than other lawyers. Ten times better than other drivers. Ten times better than other makangas. Ten times better than other saloonies. Ten times better than other chefs. Ten times better than other business women. Ten. I'm talking to somebody here. I declare in the name of Jesus. There are people in this house at the end of this week. You shall, as they examine you and they interview you, you shall be one, two, three. Four, five, six, number of completion, ten times. Come on, give the Lord a dance and bless his name and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I shall be ten times better. From today I declare, as a mechanic, you shall be ten. As a tailor, you shall be. As a chef, you shall be. Even as a house girl, you shall be. As a teacher, you shall be. I release the anointing of ten times better. I said I release the anointing of ten times better on everyone in this house, everyone in this church. You shall be what? That is what spiritual intelligence does. Don't just depend on cognitive intelligence, financial intelligence, and emotional intelligence. Get some spiritual intelligence on your side and you shall surprise your competitors. Are we still together? Can I show you how to become spiritually intelligent? And just sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's begin that again. And the king apportioned. Is that in verse, verse 5? Daniel 1 verse 5. What does it say? You ready to do with me? Come on. A daily what? Of the kings and of, of, and of the wine which he drank. And, and three years of training. Are you seeing it was a training? To make them what? Cognitive intelligence, emotional intelligence, financial. But Daniel and his friends added another training. In those three years. As they were in the same class with others. They added something that others, your curriculum, na syllabus, when gina waku anayo, your syllabus in a particular deliverance church international umoja. How about una fundisha his syllabus? His syllabus, am I in the right church here? He, akuna university kona hii syllabus. Hii syllabus ni mini kona ayo hapa. Ni rom takatifu yu kona ayo hapa. Ni hawa watumishi wako hapa na kona ayo hapa. Am I right church here? Are we still together? Nili wambia 1st Corinthians, 2nd Corinthians 20, 12. You believe in God, you shall be established. Kwa ni umulisa hau tena. I thought you are cognitive intelligence. Eh? Eh? Ni chronicles, si Corinthians. Is it first or second? Eh? Second Chronicles 2020. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be. Believe his prophets and you shall. This year 2020. Don't forget that 2020. But look at Acts 20, Acts 2020. That's another one. Acts 2020. That's why we are here. Are you getting me friends? 
you know that I've not hesitated to do what? To preach anything that will be helpful to you. But I've taught you how. Publicly and from how. If you come to this church, we shall teach you in another syllabus. To Naongeza on 2 Chronicles 2020, to Naongeza Acts 20, 20, in the year 20. If I were you, I'll be here every Sunday. Ile syllabus took an eye on restoration and demonstration. Somebody say amen. amen. So the king said, you shall eat my food, drink my wine, come to my movies, do my parties, as I train you for three years. Hey. Look at Daniel. How do you go to Daniel? But Daniel, what does it say? Wacha kubembeleza, soma kwa sauti. When you see the word but, it means the cause that that message was taken has changed. The king ordered, but Daniel, what did he do? He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested to the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile for you to get spiritual intelligence, utaacha sugar daddy. Utaacha na sugar mommy. Utaacha na sponsor. I'm about to start preaching. I'm about to start preaching, Sasa. You cannot come and tell me, Bishop Masinde, pray for me. If I need a financial breakthrough, and when you get it, you're going to drink wine. You're going to drink alcohol. Na kukuta na mbrija wa buza. I found you the bottle of Muratina. At his house, I went to the house. I went to the house. I went to For you to be spiritual intelligence, there's some wine you shall not drink. Some things you shall refuse to smoke. Some places you shall refuse to go. Talk to me, somebody here. Wherever you are, I say, whoever you are, Daniel purposed, we, together with these three friends, we shall not eat this meat. We shall not drink this wine. We shall not go to that party. We shall not enter that place. We know we have a God whom we serve. Am I talking to somebody here? In this year of, dem of restoration and demonstration, we want God to work in your life in a way that your enemies, I said your enemies, witches and wizards shall testify that God is at work in your life. Somebody say amen. And for them to testify, they shall not see you as a customer to the witches. They shall not see you in the bar. They shall not see you smoking. They shall not see you chasing women. Come on, talk to me, friends. Talk to me, my friends. If you are still chasing other people's wives, women who are not your wife, men who are not your husband, anything in a skirt, you, can, you must take to bed. Every young man, everything in a, a, a pair of trousers, you must sleep with. That is lack of spiritual intelligence. Spiritual intelligent people live with one wife and they are satisfied. If they are single, they stay single. They wait until the day they shall get married. Am I talking to somebody here? Because sometimes we want the blessings of the kingdom and live the life of the world. No. Spiritual intelligence does not come to people who have chosen to eat the delicacies of the devil and drink his wine and go to his parties and eat his meat. You are missing spiritual intelligence. If you are going to be spiritually intelligent, you must say no. You must say no. You must say no. That is what Titus is all about. Chapter 2 verse 11. Titus 2 11. What does it say? For the grace of. You are reading with a loud voice. What does it say? For the grace of God. That brings salvation. Has appeared to all men. Verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live how? Soberly, righteously, and godly. Where? In this present age. 
That is in English. They put that denying in what we call present continuous tense. Because the English language is poorer than the Greek language. In the Greek verse, that is not present continuous tense. It's what we call aorist. The English language does not have that tense. That's how the translators put it in that language. But if you go to the original Greek, that word should read like this. Teaching us that having said no to sin, we continue living daily in a state of having said no. In Angia Sasha. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Tafta mtu ambayo unaweza kuhubiria, wacha na huyu ambaye anakutisha na macho. Tafuta mtu ambayo unaona ana utukufu wa Mungu kwa uso wake. Mwambie neighbor, having said no to sin, to the world, we must continue every day living a life of having said no to sin. You cannot say no to sin once and continue sinning. You're not a Christian. If you say no to sin, every day live a life of having said no to sin. Let me tell you something. Let me show you something. I want to close. I'm in Psalms 82, verse 6 and 7. What does it say? No, I didn't say you whisper. What does it say? Who is speaking? It's God. It is God who's reminding us. It is God who's reminding us. If you pick it from verse 1, I don't have time to start exposing because my time is up. From verse 1, you'll find it is God talking. Okay? Okay? It is God? It is God? Believe him, it's God talking. Okay? Are you seeing? Go, go back, go back. Are you seeing I said? It's in, I is in capital letter. That's I am. What does I am say? You are what? You are all? Ah, why are you whispering? I'm about to finish. Go back to that verse. I said you are what? And you are all what? Let me ask you a question. Are there people who are born again here? Are you a son of the most high? Are you a child of God? Then God says if you are born again a son of the most high, then you are God. You are what? You are what? But look at the next verse, verse 7. What does it say? But you will die like mere man. You will fall like every other ruler. That's a tragedy. I said that's a tragedy. Gods don't die like mere men. Gods live forever. If I were you, I'll get holy anger to come in me right now and say, I refuse. You see, you're not getting it. I said, if I were you, I'll allow holy anger to possess me right now and lift up one finger, say, my father. Now you are whispering again, say, my father. My father, my father, my father. I refuse to die like mere men. I am teaching you so that when your life comes to an end, you shall not die like a mere man when you are a God. You need to be here next Sunday when I'm teaching what it means to be a mere man. Are you understanding me, friends? Because God says you are God's. Listen. But if you choose to live like mere men, you shall die like mere men. Because you have chosen to live like mere men. When God says no, you are not mere men. Children of the Most High are not mere men. Mtoto wa nyoka ni nini? Na mtoto wa mungu ni nani? Sasa wewe mungu anasema, you are gods. Na wewe unachagua kuishi maisha ya ulevi, usherati, wizi, uzinzi. Unaishi, unakuja kanisani. Bala kusikia na yonata kuhiba simu ya mtu. We umelaaniwa wewe. Wenzako anasikia na ulinabalisha maisha yao. Unaiba simu ya shilingi elfu mbili. 
na huyu amesikia neno in this week atatengeza 1200 bila kuiba wewe hiyo ile simu umeiba tukikushika utaenda ajala saa hii but i'm teaching you things if you learn what i'm teaching you your life shall be different you shall you shall live here on earth but you shall live like a god somebody say amen bampi ona tell him neighbor i refuse to die like a mere man my life must change my future must change my thinking must change my behavior must change my character must change somebody say amen, amen. i say your life must change your future must change your behavior must change your talk must change somebody say amen, amen. you cannot be a god and you are talking like mere men you, if your language is the language of mere men you will die like mere men that's what puts you at the bottom of the food chain and god says hey look at you you are supposed to be god yet you shall die like mere men because you don't know this truth kachupa kataska kana kukanganya kitu ya shilingi 160 na kufanya unapoteza uzi wa milele chupa ya taska kasache ka shilingi 10 kana kukanganya Look at Daniel chapter 2 verse 46. Tufunge na hiyo. Daniel 2:46. Inasemaje? So, now this is remember Nebuchadnezzar is the king in this place, eh? Nebuchadnezzar is what? The soma kwa sauti what does it say? Then King Nebuchadnezzar Before who? Before who? That's why God says I told you you are what? Whom do you fall before? Do you fall before a man or a god? Brethren, are you telling me Nebuchadnezzar had more discernment than you? What did Daniel do for Nebuchadnezzar to fall before him and worship him? A fellow human being. This is a king of Babylon falling before a man. This is in scripture. Look at the next sentence. And commanded that they should present what? An offering. And then whom do you take offerings to? That's why God says, "Did I say you are God?" Because Daniel refused to live like a mere man. Falmo nambe, this man never drank your wine. This man never ate your food. This man ate only vegetables and water, but still worshipped his God. That is a syllabus many people are missing. And when Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got that syllabus, the Bible says, in none of those experiences, and I'll show you, I'll pick from there next week, Nebuchadnezzar said, my God, this is not a human being, this is a God. He came and started worshipping him. I am talking to somebody here. But I say I'm talking to somebody here. May God give you understanding. May God give you wisdom. Because if you catch what I'm teaching you, you may find people bowing before you. It is you who will tell them, I am your fellow man. Don't bow before me. Read your Bible. They bowed before Paul. They bowed before many of these men of God before they knew that we are just your fellow human beings. I am praying this year, may God restore that understanding. May God restore that understanding to you. Refuse, come on, stand on your feet and say, my father. Put your Bibles aside. Say, my father. My father, my father, my father. Say with a sense of anger, my father, my father, my father, my, father, my, God. my, father, my father, my God, I refuse, I refuse to, die to die like a mere man, like a man. and I refuse, I refuse to live, to live like, mere man. like mere man. Pick your brother, my coffee, I'm Anna. Pick your brother. I declare over your life from today your life shall not resemble the life of mere men 
he shall resemble the life of the gods. Hey. Am I talking to somebody here? Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I refuse to live and die like a mere man. What changes you is spiritual intelligence. Spiritual? Intelligence. May you walk. Raise your hands towards me. May you walk in the light of the revelation you have received. You are not a mere man. You are a God. Live, walk, talk, behave like a child of God. In Jesus' name.